Hey everybody, how we doing today? Another windy day here in the Florida Keys. So therefore, another windy day video. I uh, actually have a new product that I'm gonna be adding to the allaboutthebait.com and that is the nine inch paddle tail rigging kit. Uh, I've been uh, working on this for the last couple of years, so I finally got a system down that's workable, plus is a unit that I could bundle together and be able to sell on the website. Uh, basically, it consists of a 9 aught wide gap stainless steel 3x strong hook. Uh, also be uh, including a patch of basically rubber matting there, and that'll be our hook retainers. And that'll work in conjunction with the corkscrew bait holders with the centering pin, the extra large size. And also will include the quarter inch uh, solid lead rod there. And that's basically uh, the component, the key component there. Uh, where it works out is a two inch long section uh, inserted into the belly will keep this bait upright and swimming correctly. And uh, I'm going to be selling these kits as just a kit only or a combo kit, which where you get the uh, paddle tail plus the uh, rigging kit. So you can check those out on the website. But otherwise, the rest of the video is basically a how-to of actually rigging these, and that's what I'm gonna post to the actual website there. So check it out. The nine inch paddle tail rigging kit consists of some quarter inch solid lead coil wire. Uh, approximately two inches is required per bait, which is about half of an ounce. Uh, for the three pack, I'll be including seven inches. Uh, for the five pack, I'll be including 12 inches. And for the 10 pack, I'll include 24 inches. That'll add some extra length. So if you need to make uh, some of the baits a little heavier, you'll have some extra length to play with. Also included is a corresponding amount of the corkscrew style bait retainers. Uh, these are extra large for the large paddle tails, and they do include the uh, larger centering pin for uh, easier insertion. Also, you'll get the corresponding amount of hooks. These are 9 aught stainless steel, wide gap. Uh, they are 3X strong, so very strong, very sharp, and uh, they'll resist corrosion. Also included is a small patch of some 8 inch rubber material and uh, we'll be using this for a uh, hook retention uh, material. The tools that we'll need to rig these baits are very basic. Uh, we're just gonna need some sort of wire cutter in order to cut our lead strips. The lead is very pliable, so it's very soft. You could actually cut this with a knife and a little hammer or a chisel, but uh, small wire cutters will do fine. I also use uh, two Phillips head screwdrivers. We're gonna need to pre-drill basically a hole. We wanna make sure that hole is very straight. So I like to start with a thinner uh, wire. You could use actually a large nail as well. Um, and then I, once I've got that first alignment uh, hole set up, then I'll go to like the wider Phillips screwdriver and I'll make the hole a little bit larger because this lead is one quarter inch in diameter, so that'll make it uh, easier to insert. We'll start off by cutting off a two inch section of the lead coil wire. Very easy to cut through, just get my wire cutters and just chops right through it there. Uh, what you can do is kind of cut it at an angle on one side and then that'll make it easier to insert, but not very important. Okay, let's start rigging our nine inch paddle tail. First, we're gonna start off with our thinner uh, Phillips screwdriver, and we're just gonna create a pilot hole that we insert through the bait and gets that hole started. Then we'll follow up with the larger Phillips screwdriver and that'll make it easier to insert our lead. Uh, for a marking point, I like to start right where this gill plate hits the bottom part of the bait and that makes my entry point of where I'll start. And then I'll and try to make sure that I stay centered through the bait. And then I can use this as a rough marker since I don't have to go necessarily very far. And that'll give me enough depth to insert the weight. Okay, I've grasped the uh, bait by the head. I'm gonna take my smaller Phillips screwdriver. I'm gonna find that point right where the gill plates on the bottom of the bait uh, come together. And that's gonna be my insertion hole. I added a little bit of uh, liquid soap to make it a little easier insertion. Find that spot, puncture it, 
Okay, and then I'm going to run it straight through the bait, trying to make sure that I stay perfectly aligned with the bait on both sides there. And then as I push it through, I can kind of feel to make sure that I'm not going to one side or the other. And I'm just going to keep pushing it in there, bring it out. If I feel I'm going uh, in the wrong direction, I can just pull it out and then reinsert. Again, I'm feeling on uh, both sides of it to make sure that I stay centered. A little bit to the left. Let me go a little bit more. It's good. It's good. And we're at full depth there. And then I could feel that uh, neither side is closer to the edge than the other, so it looks good. Then I'm gonna pull that out and then we can use the larger Phillips. Okay, now we can take our larger Phillips screwdriver, insert it in that same pilot hole, and just going to widen that hole a bit. So we're just gonna insert it and follow this original hole, and we're just gonna still do the same thing just to make sure that we're centered. Working down the bait there, keeping it straight. And we go feel that we're at that tip there, and that is more than enough that we need to insert that weight. So then I could back it out and we are ready to go. Now we can take our two inches of lead and we insert it into our pilot holes. And using a little bit of that soap will help it insert a little easier. And we just want to insert it in there. And then we can use our pliers or our screwdriver to insert it a little bit in. Okay. And now it's inserted into its belly there. Kind of see it. Uh, I haven't done it, but I guess you could probably put some super glue and seal the hole, but uh, it goes in there fairly snug, so I don't worry about it coming out. But that is all done. Next, we're gonna use our corkscrew bait holders. Um, it's got the centering pin, which makes it a little easier to insert. You can find the mold mark, creates a little offsetting centering point there. Just find that center, insert the centering pin, just go straight into the bait. You wanna make sure that it's uh, perfectly straight there. Once it's flush, then just start twisting, and then it'll corkscrew right into the bait and that centering pin will keep it going straight down the bait. And you just want it basically so it touches the edge of the nose there. You don't need to get it really wound down. And there we go. Next, we're gonna cut off a small piece of a rubber strip here. And these are gonna be our hook retainers. And what they're gonna do is prevent the hook from slipping off of our centering pin bait retainers here. So normally if you just put the hook through the bait retainer just like that, it would just slip right out and you would lose your bait. But if we run that through, then put one of these rubber pieces over the uh, barb of the hook, then there's no way for it to slip off and that means that coil will stay on there. Now I'm actually going to be utilizing two pieces of the uh, rubber retention material there. I'm going to put one on first and that's going to prevent the corkscrew from sliding up too far to the eye of the hook. Now once I've got the hook through the corkscrew eye there, then I'm going to take the second one and I'm just going to insert that onto the hook and then push it past the barb. Once it's past the barb there, it's going to constrict around it and then that's, the barb is going to prevent it from sliding back. So it's stuck on there. Then what I'll do, just to clean it up, use my scissors. And I'm just going to clean, cut some of the excess material off there. Since we really don't need a very big chunk on there. And I'm just going to cut the corners off. And that's good there. And these are easily removable if you need to swap out baits and whatnot. Is you just grab the uh, bottom of it and pull down and that'll open up the hole and then you can slide it past the barb. Okay, this bait is completed there. Uh, as you can see, we've got the uh, two hook retainers sandwiching the coil there. 
and that way it can't slide up and down the hook. However, it can go side to side with no problem and that'll keep the action correct. Um, I've got our two inch uh, weight there, which is about a half an ounce into the belly of the bait. And what that's gonna do is gonna keep the bottom of the bait towards the bottom. Uh, without the weight, the top, because it's wider on top and thinner on the bottom, it's gonna swim upside down and we don't want that. So that two inches or roughly half an ounce will keep it top centered there and uh, allow it to swim more naturally. Alrighty, that is the 9 inch paddle tail rigging kit. Uh, if you set it up correctly, it'll prevent any type of spinning action. That's definitely what you don't want. Uh, if it's set up correctly, you'll get a side to side rocking motion in the body and that paddle tail will cause a lot of vibration. So that'll work perfectly. Also check out, I'll attach the video on how to do a loop knot. That'll take out any binding in your complete uh, assembly there, including from your leader to the hook and then to the bait and keep that free mobility. Uh, so check it out at www.allaboutthebait.com. Bye.